In my last video, I talked about ZK Sync. So if you haven't seen that, then go watch it. Find out about this cryptocurrency because I and many other people are extremely excited about it. It has not had a token released yet. So there could be an airdrop coming sometime within the next year. It could be 2023, it could be 2024. If you follow the steps that I'm about to show you in this video, then this could put you in the best position for being eligible for an airdrop if they do one. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly what I've done and the steps I've taken to put myself in a position for receiving an airdrop. But I have to stress it's not guaranteed, so do this at your own risk. Anyway, let's get right into it. Now, there are several steps that I took. The first is to go to the ZK Sync website. And here, if you click on the network, you can go and explore the ecosystem. So let's click on that. Now, if you are to interact with as many of these dApps as possible, then that will put you in a good standing for getting an airdrop. ZK Sync Era is the main net, so anything compatible with that, that's what you want to be using. So if you click live on Era, then you'll see all the ones that are connected to the ZK Sync main net right now. But the first step that I took is to go to the bridge, and you're gonna want to do this as well in order to actually use the dApps on the ZK Sync layer two. You're gonna have to bridge from Ethereum layer one to ZK Sync layer two. So go to the bridge first. And what you want to do is connect your MetaMask wallet or whichever decentralized wallet, EVM compatible wallet that you are using. So you can bridge as much Ethereum you want from the layer one to the layer two. You will need some Ethereum layer one for gas to pay for this. So don't transfer all of it. Keep some for gas. So if you just put in as much as you want to bridge over, then do that, click deposit, and then you'll have to sign the transaction in your MetaMask. So that's the first step is to use the bridge to move your funds from layer one to layer two. The next thing you want to do is go to syncswap.xyz, and here you can swap your assets on the layer two. So you can see I'm connected to the ZK Sync Era mainnet. Now I can actually swap my Ethereum for other coins on the layer two. There's not many options right now, but as you can see, I can swap some to USDC, which I've done previously, or I can swap it back and forth. And the more times you make these transactions, the more likely it is that you'll be getting an airdrop because these projects usually give airdrops to people who use the ecosystem consistently and frequently. So you can swap from Ethereum to USDC or any of these other tokens right here. These are all on the ZK Sync layer two. However, I have found that ZK Sync's fees are definitely not the cheapest of layer twos. For example, Polygon is a lot cheaper than ZK Sync, but you know, maybe the fees will reduce in the future. So make some swaps and then you're ready to move on to the next step. Now it's time to use some dApps that are on ZK Sync. So I used Mint Square. Now this is an NFT platform. And basically you can mint your own NFT. So all you have to do is click on the mint button and then upload any image of your choice. Name your NFT, give it a description if you want to. Then you can add some attributes if you want to. It's giving you an example here, eyes, and then the value. I just gave mine a name because I'm not planning on actually selling this NFT. And once you've done that, then just click mint. And then you'll have to sign the transaction in your MetaMask wallet. Make sure you are on the ZK Era mainnet in your MetaMask wallet, not on the Ethereum layer one. Connect your wallet if you haven't already, click on profile, and then you'll be able to see your created NFTs here. So I minted this pumpkin from a pumpkin patch, and that's my NFT, and it is on the ZK Era mainnet, and it's just sitting in my wallet. So if you do that, and then you can also buy an NFT from someone else's collection if you want to, just to boost your chances of an airdrop even further. So you can click on collections at the top and just browse some others that are available. Of course, you do have to pay for them. Some of them are quite expensive, but if you just want to mint an NFT, it is free to mint. You just have to pay the gas fee. So once you've minted an NFT on Mint Square, then you can move on to another dApp. 
the next step to boost your chances of getting an airdrop is to go to the zksdomains website. Okay, it's a ZK Sync name service website. It's basically buying your own domain name on ZK Sync. So just click launch app. And here you can register your omnichain domain name on ZK Sync. Okay, so you can type in whatever you want. Uh, I did Lazy Boy Crypto, of course, and the domain is at .zk. And you'll see the search. This one is unavailable because I have already registered it. So you can pick your own domain name. Of course, it has to be one that's not already taken. And then just sign the transaction in your MetaMask wallet. Again, make sure you're connected to the ZK Sync mainnet. You can see this one is available, so just click it and then you'll be able to sign the transaction within your MetaMask wallet and it will tell you the price. So yeah, it's $6.80 USD plus the gas fee. And then you can register it. But keep in mind, you will need some Ethereum on your layer two in order to pay for this. And that's why I suggested the first step is to bridge Ethereum from layer one to layer two so that you can actually buy things and pay for things on the layer two. So once you have registered your domain name, now you can move on to the next step. And this next step is going to another D app that is live on the ZK mainnet, and that is mute.io. So click on mute, and then you can enter the app, connect your wallet, and again, make sure you're on the ZK era mainnet. So I'll just connect, and you can use any of these compatible wallets. So here you can do some swaps like we've done before on the ZK sync. So you can swap Ethereum for another token. There's some options here, USDC, for example, whatever you want. So you can do that, or you can just go straight to the pool and add some liquidity. So I added some liquidity to this pool here. It's the USDC and Ethereum pool. And it will give you the APY here. If you're interested in that, this one is very high at 237%. But I just went for this one, 39% APY. This can fluctuate. Just click on manage. And here you can deposit equal amounts USDC and equal amounts Ethereum. You can see this is a very popular pool with over 8 million in the total value locked. But basically, say you want to put in $20 worth of USDC, because we know that's a stable coin, 20 USD is about 20 USDC, then we just need to add $20 worth of Ethereum. And you can see it's actually calculated it automatically for me, so I don't have to calculate it myself. So once you have your amounts in there, then you can go ahead and sign the transaction. Again, you will need some Ethereum on the layer two to pay for gas, but it is a small amount. And if I click the rewards tab, you'll see that I've already added liquidity to this pool. Not very much though, I only have about five cents in USDC rewards to collect. But you don't have to use just that pool. You can use any of these pools. You could add liquidity to all of them. Maybe that will boost your chances for an airdrop or maybe just use one pool like I have. No one knows exactly what activity will make you eligible for an airdrop if there is one. So you want to do the most that you can afford to make yourself the most eligible. And you can connect to some other DEXs like Orbiter Finance is also a popular one on ZK Sync. So as long as you're interacting with the mainnet, that's another step that could boost your chances of getting an airdrop. And the final thing that I would recommend is just to hold some tokens in your ZK era mainnet wallet. So you can see I have about 300 Canadian worth of Ethereum just sitting in my wallet here on the ZK era mainnet. And I will use some of this to interact with these dApps now and then, because you're most likely to get an airdrop if you actually interact with the ecosystem over a long period of time. They don't really want to give their token to people who are just hunting airdrops, you know, doing these steps within 24 hours. So everything I've shown you in this video, try to space it out over a number of days, weeks, or months and interact with the ecosystem as frequently as you can afford. And if you don't have much money, then you can make small transactions. I've mostly made very small transactions, $5 here, $10 there. 
but the more steps you take, the more apps you interact with, the more eligible you may become. That will certainly boost your chances. And just by having that NFT in my wallet, along with some funds sitting in the ZK era mainnet in my wallet, perhaps that will also help me receive an airdrop if there is one. Let me know if there's any additional steps that you've taken to become eligible for an airdrop and also let me know what other projects you're excited for that have yet to be released. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, then please subscribe and also give this video a like as well. Thanks for watching.